How good a judge of character are you? I got nightmares in my head. I fear thoughts build up until I can't hear. My mind fills up into a creature, and it haunts me somewhere much deeper. I got nightmares in my head. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. One week after 19-year-old Jay Slater disappeared. A war is going on for his soul. One side, basically his family and friends and the mainstream media describe him as a likable apprentice bricklayer, someone with many friends, another, the other side, as a machete-wielding drug kingpin. Which one is he? PH Build, that's the company that he worked for, a construction company, they made a statement on Facebook saying, Our Jay is still missing. We've decided to remove our last post due to all the negative comments and conspiracy theories. Jay has been with us since he left school and is liked by all. He's a valued member of our team and we stand by him. The picture painted of him is just not true. The fact is he's a 19-year-old lad missing in a foreign country. He needs to be back home where he belongs. Come on, Jay. We are all praying for you. So... Is the construction company part of the conspiracy? Because that's quite a big statement to say he's been with the company since school and is liked by all. Can you say that about yourself? If you disappeared, would your company send out some kind of ringing endorsement about you? Would your family travel to another country to look, look for you and would they shed tears on camera, their voice breaking? Would your friends try and look for you and make an effort and go there themselves. And I guess this is where we separate the men from the boys when it comes to looking for someone or looking at someone, looking at their face, looking at their family and friends and deciding who they probably are. Are we good at that or or are we not very good at it? Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do welcome to the many of you who have. If you're finding this analysis important, necessary, authentic, please uh, like, share a comment. If, if you don't, please do leave a shitty comment. And you can also hit the no thanks button and let's get started. Now, this is just my uninformed opinion. When you have a good person and you manufacture them into a bad person, I think that says something about you, not them. And when I look at Jay, I see a young, fresh-faced kid he seems like a nice kid that's what i see how but how do you discern the character of a person other than by looking at at them looking at their relationships looking at the type of people they're surrounded by also looking at their actions and looking at their words you can also look at the words of those that are speaking up for them and it's people rather look at those that are close to them that know them than the people that don't and so what does the construction company say? The, the construction company is called PH Build Group. They say that um, the picture being painted of him is just not true. And all of this is going on while search teams are, are narrowing their efforts to small buildings. And they're trying to kind of target their search to, to the area where his phone last pinged. Now, I'm seeing folks with that other picture of this kid in my comments. Some are saying he's a crook, others that his mother is a crook, still others that his girlfriend is running a scam. Whatever permutation we're dealing with here, this is still a case of it's either an accident or foul play. And I've already at length made the case that it certainly looks like an accident. All the... um, all the factors necessary for it to not need foul play to take place are there. And of course, the identity of uh, Jay Slater, certainly the way I see it, the way I'm interpreting it, goes uh, supports that as well. But other people seem to want it to be foul play, and so they're trying to manufacture a alternative identity. And so from where I'm standing, the crooks and scammers that I'm seeing Aunt Jay and, and Aunt, the people he knows, they're all on social media. They're people that are trying to break into his Instagram. They're people that are telling his mother that he, uh, somebody owes, Jay owes somebody a lot of money. Well, 
Those aren't the kidnappers. Those are online scammers. Nowhere in the mainstream media, other than the story from Sky, which has only come out a week later, um, saying that the portrait sketch is simply not true. Nowhere in the mainstream media is there any acknowledgement of the Jay Slater monster that is being created by certain parts of social media. So there's kind of schizophrenia in the media. One side is true. The other side isn't. One side is anchored in reality. The other one is anchored in hysteria and prejudice. The difference between the mainstream media and social media is if the mainstream media publish slanderous slurs or unsubstantiated rumors, they can and will get sued. Did you know that? But it's social media's bread and butter, it appears. So going back to the article from Sky, the construction company that employs Mr. Slater as an apprentice bricklayer say the teenager has been misrepresented online. My question is, are you part of that? Are you part of that misrepresentation? Did you hear something, believe it, and now you are circulating it, reinforcing it, spreading it, basically spreading rumors? Are you part of that? Do you remember Brexit? Remember when Brexit happened and people kind of did the same thing, made representations, made decisions. How do you feel about Brexit now, now that reality has kind of sunk in? And so, you know, it is important to be on the side of facts and reality and sensible thinking compared to misrepresentations, emotions, speculation and all that. Because you might end up in a reality that you don't really want, don't really like, but one that you've actually helped co-create. So ask yourself a question. Are you a witch hunter or a truth teller? Are you a conspiracy rat or someone who gravitates to the, to the truth and reality? Can you discern reality, the difference between reality and fiction? Well, this is an opportunity to, to show whether you can or whether you can't. Of course, nobody knows, nobody absolutely knows what has happened here, including me. I'm only going based on my experience and based on what I'm seeing. And it's a admittedly fairly small picture. But And the longer Jay remains missing, it seems, the more mysterious his disappearance becomes. And during the vacuum of uncertainty, social media will race to fill that space, not with facts, but rumors, slurs, and innuendo. This channel will do the opposite, try to find facts, try and make sense of what we know. Look at other cases where something similar has happened and, and try to figure out what has happened. It does make one wonder what sort of society we are becoming when this particular case. Do we care? Do we really care? Do we genuinely care? Do we sincerely care about what happens to our fellow man and woman, someone who goes missing? Do, do we actually care about what is going on there? Or do we care about being right about ap how absolutely horrible we think or believe that person that we don't really know is? Well, other people are caring, like law enforcement and journalists on the ground. And some people out there, um, you know, obviously it's not all of you that, that believe in this. But if it is the latter, Jay isn't the only one who is completely lost in the wilderness now, is he? I'm not going to take it further than that. In the next two videos, we'll examine the foul play narrative in more detail. Thank you for listening. I hope you've had a good weekend and I'll see you guys next time.